Canada is the second largest country in the world. It covers almost 10 million square kilometers and is made up of 10 provinces and three territories. Canada is a modern country filled with diverse multicultural citizens, but it wasn't always this way. Before Confederation, we had a diverse and storied history. We were part of France, then part of Britain. But with a country so large and a growing population, it became more and more important to work together and become one country. It was also important to have a set of rules in place to govern this new country. So how did it all happen? It started ages ago. Long before Canada became a nation, Aboriginal peoples inhabited this land. And before European people explored Canada, the Aboriginal people had developed their own political and social organizations. Aboriginal societies were largely governed by unwritten customs and codes of conduct. Their governments reflected the economic, social, and geographic diversity of the Aboriginal people, as well as their cultural and spiritual beliefs. When making important decisions, the family was the most basic unit. Other units could include the village, the clan, the tribe, and the nation. For example, the Iroquois and Huron lived in villages and towns and farmed the land. They had what was called a confederacy. Decision-making was done by two councils, one for civil matters, the other for war. Older men and heads of large families had the most influence. The Plains Cree were nomadic, meaning they moved to follow their food supply, such as the buffalo. They made decisions through a chief and a council of elders. On the west coast, the Pacific Coast peoples had a complex social structure that included nobility, commoners, and slaves. The leaders of each village met during potlatch ceremonies to discuss matters of common interest. When Europeans, primarily the French and English, began arriving in the 1500s, they quickly realized this land was rich with resources. Things like timber, fish, and minerals. They valued these items and eventually established settlements here. They met the Aboriginal people who had already lived here for thousands of years. The First Nations people and Europeans had a difficult relationship. They often went to war with one another when they realized how difficult it was to live together. However, at times, they did get along and learned from each other. As time passed, Numerous events would eventually lead to the development of Canada as a nation. Britain and France repeatedly went to war in the 17th and 18th centuries and made their colonial empires into battlefields. Canada was also an important battlefield in the Seven Years' War from 1756 to 1763. By the end of the war, in 1763, France gave up control of its Canadian colonies to Britain. The victorious British now controlled all of eastern North America. At the time of war with France, most of Britain's colonies consisted of the 13 colonies now part of the United States. In 1775, these colonies declared war on Britain to fight for their independence. This war was known as the American Revolution. The American Revolution was a catalyst for great change on the continent. By 1783, the revolution was over and the 13 colonies became the original states of the United States of America, a new country. The United States of America did not welcome those who had opposed the rebels during the war. These people, known as Loyalists, would be forced to leave. Up to 100,000 left and came north. Their departure would greatly influence the colonies to the north, the future country of Canada. The Treaty of Paris officially recognized the United States of America. It's important to note that the First Nations people were excluded from the treaty. Lands in North America were divided between the British and the Americans, with no provision for First Nation lands. 
People who had lived on the lands longer than either the British or Americans now had no say in whether their tribes would be living under American jurisdiction or British. In the 1860s, the British colonies were facing many different kinds of problems. Political problems. The province of Canada, Ontario and Quebec, which had the most people, did not run smoothly. The English-speaking and French-speaking halves disagreed on how things should be run. Economic problems. In order for their economies to do well, the colonies needed to be able to sell their goods to other markets. At this time, there were very few places that they could sell to. If all of the colonies were together, it would be easier to sell goods to each other. Military problems. During the American Civil War, Britain supported the South over the North. When the North won the war, they were naturally upset with Britain for helping the South, and therefore wanted to take over all of what is now known as Canada. Britain decided to encourage the colonies to join together, because the United States would be less likely to attack Canada if it were a strong, self-governing country. By 1864, many leaders felt might be good to join into one country. These people were a diverse group. People in government, English and French, lawyers, journalists, shipbuilders, soldiers, poets and businessmen. Known as the Fathers of Confederation, these leaders met several times at conferences to debate the issues facing the proposed new country. The Charlottetown Conference. The Charlottetown Conference in September 1864 in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island set Confederation in motion. Nova Scotia, New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island had already discussed the possibility of a maritime union. They decided to have a conference to discuss this. The province of Canada, consisting of Ontario and Quebec, asked to join the conference. The question on all of their minds was, shall we unite? The delegates agreed to join together in a federal union, and it was decided to have another meeting in Quebec in October. The spirit of confederation was born. The Quebec Conference. One month later, in October 1864, the Quebec Conference took place. The leaders had to work out how the new country would be run. Newfoundland also participated this time. The decisions they came to were called the Quebec Resolutions, although Prince Edward Island and Newfoundland both took part. After the conference, they both decided not to join Confederation at that time. Although the Quebec Resolutions were formally adopted only by the province of Canada, they formed the basis of the British North America Act, which created Canada. The London Conference. The final conference was the London Conference, which took place in London, England from December 1866 to January 1867. Leaders from New Brunswick, Nova Scotia and the province of Canada had to take the rough draft of the Quebec resolutions and come up with a final agreement. 